Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do reflections using patty paper, wax paper, baggy, however you wanna do it. Let me explain what I'm talking about. This is a piece of patty paper. Your geometry teacher may have one. If they don't, there's a couple of things you can have at home that might work. Uh, this baggy idea is kind of fun. You can just use a clear baggy and some dry erase markers. Anything you can see through that you can trace, your axes and your shape, and the points that you wanna move around on here. We're gonna be doing reflections today, so we'll be turning them around. So anything like that would work. Um, I got wax paper at home, and you can get those at the grocery store. You have to look around for those. You just need something you can see through and write on. And if you're using wax paper, you don't wanna write on the part that has the wax on it, obviously. So I took a big piece of wax paper, cut it up, and we are going to trace the axes and the shape. And I'm not using a ruler. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is a helping tool to get these problems right when you are having difficulty understanding the algebra shortcuts. If you're a teacher, what I found was that kids will understand the algebra shortcuts a lot better and faster. If you start with something that's like this, so they can visualize where you're moving and they'll actually come up with the shortcuts on their own. And if they don't, you know, or they'll just understand you when you explain it to them. So we are going to be reflecting this shape and finding new points for it. This is the P, this is the Q, and this is the R. That probably bled through because I was a Sharpie. Yeah, no worries. All right, and I would have this stuff available for kids to use during quizzes and tests as well. If you bring it in and you're a student and you bring in these things in, check with your teacher before you bring them out during a test or quiz. You don't wanna get in trouble for that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're gonna run through four real common questions that you'll see in geometry class. Usually reflect across the y-axis. We'll do that one first. Then we're gonna reflect across the x-axis. Then we're gonna reflect across the line y equals one. And then we're gonna reflect across the line y equals two. So let's write down the points where we've got right now. P is two, two. Q is one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, and R, one, two, three, four, and up one. So those are the original points. When we write the new points, we'll just be adding apostrophes on and calling them P prime, Q prime, and R prime. So we'll do that for this first one, reflect across Reflect across the y-axis. We're gonna get new points, P prime, Q prime, and R prime. And that's how we do it. They're like images of the first point. We use the same letters and we put the little apostrophe on there. That's what that means. All right, so here's our, here's our little triangle and those are the points. We're going to reflect across the y-axis. You do not need to have the lines, but I'll bet you'd want to draw them, don't you? <laughs> okay. All right. This is the y-axis, the one that goes straight up and down. And we're going to reflect by as if it was looking at its image in a mirror or you're looking down into a pond or something. We're just going to flip this thing over. It's now reflected. Of course, the writing is backwards, but that ain't no big deal. We can line it back up on your origin. I forgot to draw that. Here's the origin. That's like kind of like your center of, ref of this whole thing. So make sure that's lined up. And we can see where the new points are. There's the new P. It is uh, negative two, positive two. So I'm gonna write that down. Negative two, positive two. Our new Q is one, two, three, four, five. So it's negative five, and it should be at the same level as it was before, because you just reflect it. So that's going to be four. 
and the new R is just reflected across, so the height of it doesn't change. That's the Y value, but the X changes to 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's negative 4, positive 1. And if you look at the points, you can see the algebra shortcut for that is actually pretty easy if you get it. It's hard to understand what's happening, though, unless you have a visual, and this is the visual. All right, so let's do the next one, which is going to be reflecting across the x-axis. So I'm going to take this same thing, and I'm going to flip it down across the x. This is the x. This is now my mirror, and I'm going to reflect across that by just flipping this upside down, lining it back up. So I'm going to go p double prime here. So my p stayed at the same x, it's just the y changed this time. So we're at 2, and my y is now negative 2. It was 2, 2, and now it's 2, negative 2. q double prime stayed at the same x value, just flipped down. So that's 5, and that's going to be negative 4. And then r double prime stays at the same x, flips down for the y, so that's 4, negative 1. All right, now, and again, there's going to be people who totally get the algebra shortcuts really fast, how to change the points without doing the actual flip, but most people are going to need to see what they're doing, and it gets a little tricky when we have to start doing something like this. Reflect across the line y equals 1. So first off, I need to find that line y equals 1. y equals 1 is the line where all the y values are negative 1. That, that's the height. That means the height is set at negative 1. The x's can change, but the height has to be negative 1. Oopsie, I already made a mistake. It's right here. Negative 1. So I that line is right here. So when you reflect this thing, now I want you to ignore the axis. We're going to go across this line. This is the new mirror. So I still have to line things up. Well, that isn't going to work with this one, is it? Because I have my big fat line in the wrong spot. So I need to draw a new one. So I grab a new piece of patty paper. I want to go across this line. And this is my y-axis. So that is how I am going to do it this time. And there are shortcuts for this too, but I want to show you how to do it with patty paper. All right, so now I'm going to flip, but I'm going to line back this thing back up again with these teal green colored lines. I forgot to write my letters. And your students will do that too. Okay, they are important, even though they end up upside down. All right, there we go. And this is a little bit messy because my... I smeared, but there's also, it's messy because it just went off the graph. That's also going to be a problem for kids. That's why I wanted to do it anyway. I don't want to make it look good. I want to make it look real. All right, so now we need to come up with our new points. Our, now I, this, I've already used two apostrophes here, so I'm going to use P triple prime. This doesn't happen very often, but I'm not going to make up new letters. I want them to be the image to have the same point as the original. All right, so the x value, I mean, you're still using your coordinate, your axes to find your points. It started at 2, 2, and it, it was the point now, 1, 2, 3. Do you guys see your three boxes away from your reflection, and then your, your new one is three boxes down from that? You're right here. But when you write your points, you still have to do it the way we do it with the x's and the y's. The x is still positive 2, right there. The y now is from 
zero is one, two, three, four, negative four. It's symmetrical because you are still three boxes up from your line, from your reflection line, and three boxes down from your reflection line, but the actual coordinate is four boxes down from there. Remember, this was at y equals negative one, so the whole mirror dropped down one. All right, now we're gonna try to get q triple prime which is, you know, here's Q, Q triple prime is way down here, and I'm gonna have to count a little bit. I know the X is still gonna be the same, so that is gonna be five. And now, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five boxes away from the new reflection line, so this has gotta be five boxes down there. I'm just gonna count though to find the y coordinate and you have to count from where y equals zero, which is here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be negative six. Let's double check to make sure I did that right. One, two, three, four, five. You are five boxes away from negative one. So this is negative x equals, neg no, this is y equals negative one. This is negative one, so I needed to be five boxes down from there, which would be negative six. I know this is slower and trickier, but this is what you'll be expected to do in class. And it is easier when you can see it. And let's do R, triple prime, lining everything back up again. That one is right here. Okay. Nope, I didn't line it up right. There it is. <laughs> you caught that, didn't you? Go ahead and leave me a comment if you're like, no, no, no. All right, so here is R. Here is our trip. Here's our reflection of R. One, two boxes away from the line we're reflecting across. The new one is also two boxes away. The X stays the same. So that's going to be four. The Y is going to be now one, two, three, negative three. And that's how you reflect across a line. Those are harder, aren't they? Let's talk about how to reflect across a different kind of line and that's an X equals line. I got a fresh piece of paper here cause I don't wanna go to, <laughs> I, wanna, I don't wanna have like four apostrophes. So let me write down what the points were. So x equals two is where the side to side movement is held constant at two. There is no, uh, the, the y can be anything. This is gonna be a vertical line and it's at the place where x equals two, which is right there. So I am gonna draw a purple line going up and down. That's our new mirror. So instead of going across this axis, we're gonna go across that line and we're gonna be flipping it this way. We have a different line to reflect across. So I'm gonna draw it again. And since I have the ruler handy, I might as well draw a straight line. That is what we're going to be reflecting across. This is our P and our I was off. Okay, there it is. Our Q and our R, and you certainly don't have to draw the whole, all the sides, so I'm not going to this time. And when I reflect this, I think you can see what's gonna happen with the P. That's not gonna move. That's kind of fixed right on the line there. So when I turn it and I line it back up again, I line up the purple line. I'm not lining up the points. I'm lining the purple line back up to the purple line. You can see the P won't move. The Q and the R do. So now I need to write in my points, trim off this excess, line it back up. Okay, let's write in my new points. The P is exactly the same. That's not gonna move at all. The Q, is now right here. It's at the same height. 
reflections don't change some things and that one the height isn't going to change so the y is the same but the x is now don't count from here you count from the origin you still are in you're still on a coordinate plane you still have to use those rules you count from the origin it is now at negative one positive four where you see some symmetry here is that the original point is one two three boxes away from the line of reflection and the, and the reflection point the image point one, two three also three boxes away from that this has to do with where that point is in relationship to the original graph and lighting them back up and the R is at the same height so the Y won't change but the X is now here and it's that's actually right on the Y axis so the X value there is zero the Y value is positive one we still are two boxes away two boxes away here is a link to the rotations video i did using patty paper i'll see you guys next time bye